Darkness. A darkness that can be felt. Man, imagine that. That's just incredible to me that, that scripture would be that detailed about what the Israelites and the Egyptians might have experienced in the ninth plague. So, uh, after last week's sermon, I had two individuals who were not related at all, not connected at all, come to the same thought. And both of them asked, is it possible that maybe the Egyptians were just supernaturally blinded from the sun? That it wasn't necessarily the sun that was um, being blocked out for some supernatural event or cosmic reason? And it's very possible. I, I think that as we read scripture, we have to be open to all kinds of interpretations and possibilities. Uh, and we have to kind of begin at the place where we're not God and he is, so he can do whatever he wants. But I do think that there's another possible reason. And that's what the purpose of this video is, is just to kind of explain to you some things that are going on maybe behind the scenes in the Egyptian world that I think we lose on this side of the cross, on this side of time. Because remember, the Egyptian people in the timeline that we're talking about is 1,500 years before Christ. So we're 3,500 years separated, and undoubtedly, we're still learning all kinds of things about Egyptian culture that are fascinating to us. But one specific thing that I want to point out in this section, Exodus chapter 10, I'm going to start in verse 21, where the ninth plague of darkness starts to come on the land. Um, is uh, let, me, let me read to you verse 21. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand towards the sky, so that the darkness could be spread all over Egypt, a darkness that could be felt. And Moses stretched out his hand. Remember, on Sunday we talked about how this was the third command that the Lord had given Moses to stretch out his hand. Two other times, Moses actually stretches out his staff. But this time, Moses stretches out his hand towards the sky. And total darkness started to cover all of Egypt for three days. Now, I think we have to pause here and really start to kind of lean into Egyptian culture. Um, as we've said before, some of these plagues, in fact, all of these plagues are probably polemic in nature, meaning that God is attacking the gods of Egypt. We know that in Numbers chapter 33, verse 4. It says that um, all of the plagues were a judgment on the Egyptian gods. So which god are we specifically targeting here? I think it's Amun-Ra. Amun-Ra, the story goes, uh, used to ride the boat across the dome. Remember, we looked at one of the other gods that was a dome god, and she controlled the entire kind of, um, I guess you would call it the firmament or, or the entire atmospheric pressure of the world. And she created the, the invisible boundary between the heavens and the earth. And so Amun-Ra would ride his magic boat with his stick in hand that carried the light for the world. And every day as he would descend into the depths of the underworld, he would go on this journey, he would go on this adventure where he would fight 12 horrific monsters, each one hour long apiece. It's interesting, the circadian rhythm uh, and the geographic location of Egypt and, and how that would all kind of play itself out. But Amun-Ra would, would go through these epic battles with these monsters, one hour apiece. And he would arise finally victorious 12 hours later um, displaying his victory with the sun, all to do it all over again. So the scriptures say that as Moses stretches out his hand towards the sky, total darkness could be covered in all of Egypt for three days. Imagine being an Egyptian, knowing that this is your God. This is the God. This is the ultimate God who provided life itself for you. Amen Ra. And then when he descends into the depths, and does not come back, not one day, not two days, but three days, the horror that might be on your heart. This is, this is one of those moments for an Egyptian that is unthinkable. The whole world as they knew it was over. And we have also kind of leaned in at the very beginning of our Moses story, understanding who Pharaoh believed he was. Remember, Pharaoh believes he's Horus, which is the grandson of Amun-Ra. He thinks he's the actual incarnation of Horus himself. And Horus was represented as a falcon god. That's why the Egyptians were so fascinated with eyeliner. And you could see all kinds of uh, different um, images of the Egyptians that just had their eyes focused and highlighted. It was because of Horus and who Horus was. And if you think of a falcon, a falcon can turn its head any way it wants and it could see the entire landscape, especially as it flies. There is nothing that's hidden underneath the sun for Horus. 
Uh, imagine a hawk flying as a predator, finding a little field mouse in the reeds. Uh, even the slightest movement could be detected by Horus. And certainly, Pharaoh believed the same of himself. But now with Amun-Ra gone, and with Horus not able to see, it says that he summons Moses. And listen to what scripture says. The Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he was not willing to let them go. And Pharaoh had said to Moses, get out of my sight. Make sure you never appear before me again, because the day you do, the day I see your face, you will surely die. Uh, think about the irony that's happening in that statement. First, get out of my sight. Well, he can't see you anyway. Second, the day I see you, the day hasn't been around for three days. And Moses says, as surely as you say, it will be done. I will never see you again. There's something here I just want to kind of help us as we transition into the next part of the story, which is the last plague. And we'll be focusing on that the rest of this weekend with Passover um, and with Easter. And so in chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now the Lord had said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. And we have to kind of circle the word had, meaning sometime before Moses had arrived in Pharaoh's court, during this plague of darkness, the Lord had let Moses in on the plan that we're almost home. And that's where we're going to leave you off until we continue our story in Moses. Thanks for watching.